Let's think about making a solution. When a solute, like this solid, is added to a solvent, like the water in this container, a solution can form. In the process of forming a solution, there can be a net gain or a net release of energy by the solute and solvent. What we want to do is to quantify and discuss the origin of these energy changes. We have to be careful when discussing these energy changes to be sure we use precise and well-defined terminology. Whenever we study energy changes, the thing we are interested in is called the system. It's the thing we are studying the energy change of. In this case, the system is the solute and solvent. Even when they are separated, the system consists of these two things. Everything that is not the system is called the surroundings. This is literally everything else, including the container for the solution, the air around the container, and your hand, which you will surely use to touch the container. When we say we are interested in the energy gained or released during solution formation, we mean we are interested in the energy change between a final state and an initial state of the system. The final state of the system is the one in which the solute and solvent are homogeneously mixed. That's the solution. The initial state of the system is the one in which the solute and solvent are separated from each other before we we begin mixing them. This energy change can be written mathematically as the energy of the final state of the system, the solution, minus the energy of the initial state of the system before solute and solvent are mixed. This can be written more compactly as delta E, which is read as the change in energy. The capital Greek letter delta is a symbol we use to mean the change in what comes after it. It always means the final value of a quantity minus the initial value and is always read as change in. In this case, that's final energy minus initial energy or change in energy. If the total energy of the solution that's the final energy, is greater than the total energy of the solute and solvent before being mixed, that's the initial energy, then the change in energy of the system will be positive, greater than zero, which means there has been a net gain of energy by the system during solution formation. The name for this type of energy change is endothermic. If the total energy of the solution is lower than the total energy of the solute and solvent before being mixed, then the change in energy of the system will be negative, less than zero, which means there has been a net loss or release of energy by the system during solution formation. The name for this type of energy change is exothermic. This is a good start, but we need to think about these energy changes in a bit more detail. So if we have a system and it gains energy in an endothermic solution process, where does the gained energy come from? It must come from outside the system, and everything other than the system is the surroundings, so it comes from the surroundings. On the other hand, if a system releases energy in an exothermic solution process, that energy must go into the surroundings. How do we know this? We know this because energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy gained by the system was not created from nothing. It was lost by the surroundings and transferred to the system. Likewise, energy released by the system is not lost and never seen again. It must enter the surroundings. Another way to say this is that energy always transfers from one place to another. If a place gains energy, you can be assured that someplace else lost it. This rule or law goes by many names. It can be called the law of energy conservation, the first law of thermodynamics, or just the first law. I prefer to call this the first law, and so I'll use that. A consequence of the first law is that you can detect whether making a solution is endothermic or exothermic by putting your hand on the container. If making the solution is an endothermic process, energy will leave your hand, which is a part of the surroundings, to enter the system. Your body will interpret this as something cold. When making a solution is endothermic, the container gets cooler, sometimes by a lot. If making the solution is exothermic, energy will enter your hand as it leaves the system. Your body will interpret this as something warm or hot. When making a solution is exothermic, the container gets warmer, sometimes by a lot. Hot and cold packs are based on this phenomena. This all sounds great, but absolute energies and energy changes are difficult to measure. That means that quantifying everything we are talking about will be difficult. This does not mean we give up, however, it just means that we need to find something easier to measure. Before we talk about that, I need to remind you that solutions are typically formed under constant pressure conditions. In the laboratory, the container in which we make a solution is typically open to the atmosphere, like this beaker, which means the solute, solvent, and solution are all exposed to the same pressure all the time. Because of this, it turns out that the quantity we can measure easily Easily is an enthalpy change. An enthalpy change is energy transferred due to a temperature difference under constant pressure conditions like those in an open laboratory container. The symbol for an enthalpy change is delta H. Enthalpy changes are related to the difference in temperature between the system and the surroundings, and because a temperature difference is easy to measure, enthalpy is easy to measure. This is true only under constant pressure conditions, which will be true for all open containers, which is most containers in the laboratory. Energy transfer due to a temperature difference has a special name. It is called heat. So another definition of enthalpy is heat at constant pressure. The result of all of this is that we talk about the energy changes during solution formation in terms of enthalpy changes, which we can measure easily. Energy and enthalpy are closely related, but we have to keep in mind that they are not technically the same thing. 
With that in mind, we can say that when a solution forms, the enthalpy of the system may increase or decrease. This change in enthalpy is the difference between the enthalpy of the solution, the final state, and the enthalpy of the solute and solvent when they are not mixed, the initial state. If the solution's enthalpy is greater than the initial enthalpy, delta H is positive, meaning enthalpy has increased during formation of the solution. This is still called an endothermic solution process. As we have already learned, we expect the container to be cooler after endothermic solution formation. If the solution's enthalpy is less than the initial enthalpy, delta H is negative, meaning enthalpy has decreased during formation of the solution. This is still called an exothermic solution process. As we have learned, we expect the container to be warmer after exothermic solution formation. That's all important, but you'll notice we have not seen any actual values for the enthalpy change upon solution formation. That's next. The enthalpy change for solution formation is called one of two things, enthalpy of solution or heat of solution. Both terms mean the same thing. There's a special symbol we use for enthalpy of solution, and it is delta H with a subscript S-O-L-N. When you see this, you know it is referring to the enthalpy change when a solute is mixed with a solvent to form a solution. It is the enthalpy of the solution, the final state, minus the enthalpy of the unmixed solute and solvent, which is the initial state. So let's look at some experimentally measured heats of solution for electrolytes, substances that break into ions in aqueous solution. These data are from the 91st edition of the CRC, and all values are in units of kilojoules per mole of substance. Potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, potassium chloride, ammonium chloride, and sodium chloride all have a positive heat of solution when dissolved in water, which means that the enthalpy of the final state, the solution, is greater than the enthalpy of the initial state, the unmixed solute and solvent. Dissolving these substances in water is endothermic, which means the solution will feel colder to you than the water solvent before adding the solute. Sodium bromide, sodium iodide, sodium acetate, sodium hydroxide, and potassium hydroxide all have a negative heat of solution when dissolved in water, which means that the enthalpy of the final state, the solution, is less than the enthalpy of the initial state, the unmixed solute and solvent. Dissolving these substances in water is exothermic, which means that the solution will feel warmer to you than the water solvent before adding the solute. Heats of solutions for species like these with a charge of plus 1 for the cation and minus 1 for the anion will typically fall between negative 80 kilojoules per mole to plus 60 kilojoules per mole for compounds that dissolve in water. Substances with enthalpies of solution that are too positive will tend not to dissolve because in those cases the things working against solution formation, solute-solute and solvent-solvent interactions, outweigh the things working for solution formation, solute-solvent interactions and the entropy increase upon dispersal. This makes dispersal non-spontaneous, preventing formation of the solution, making the solute insoluble. It's worth pointing out that instant cold packs are based on the endothermic heat of solution for compounds such as ammonium nitrate and urea. Ammonium nitrate is listed in the table, but urea is not because it is not an electrolyte. Instant hot packs are based on the exothermic heat of solution of compounds such as magnesium sulfate. These products are essentially a bag of water with an inner bag containing the solute. Squeezing the cold or hot pack breaks the inner bag, leading to solution formation. This leads either to a gain in system enthalpy, that's a cold pack, or to a release of enthalpy from the system, and that's a hot pack. And that's energy changes during solution formation.